The UK black market is booming. We're being sold everything from fake branded goods to Armani, Saatchi, to illegal copies of Xanax pills. So what we have here is 42,000 Xanax. Some sell on the street. And is there any age limit you'd sort of stop selling to? I feel like a bit too or something, I'm not going to sell them. Yeah. But business is really big on social media. Do not mention drug names, lab names, or the website. Britain is flooded with fake stuff. Stella McCartney's. It's like a shoe cemetery. And lots of it is made in illegal underground factories. And they've been able to, to produce enough for the demand. Right here Whoa. in the UK. I've spent my career going deep into the heart of the criminal world. Now I'm investigating the black market, where fake clothes and pills are big money makers for organised criminals. It has always existed, if you know where to look, but it's changing fast. This is Bovingdon Market, 30 miles from London. It runs every Saturday with hundreds of stalls. Traders will not talk openly, so I go in wearing hidden cameras. Fake gear is being sold here with a sign at the entrance telling visitors to report it. Got Armani, Saatchi. <coughs> Where are they coming from? From Poland. Poland. Stolen from Poland. Stolen from Poland. How much is it? 60. 60, that's quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why people go to the market. Yeah. Where do you come from? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why are you trying to look crazy? Yeah. Oh, I really oh, you bring it yourself. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, guys. Thank you. The market owner told us they are not aware of any recent or current incidents of fake goods being sold. But the black market has moved on. Places like Bovingdon are being left behind as customers turn to social media to buy their fake gear. But who is running these online sites? I do a bit of digging. Someone called Harry gets back to me. Harry claims he imports boutique gear from China to then sell on. This could be him. The van's just pulled up. He's not picked up his phone, but he cut it off as soon as he come around this corner. So I'm pretty sure that's going to be the guy. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about what do, what do you do? Uh, I hustle, so I buy, I buy and sell a lot of stock. Uh, usually sell a lot of designer grams and stuff like that. I take a closer look at a Gucci belt. I'm not so sure about the buckle on this one. Would you, what do you think of it? I think the, the belt's good, top quality, but the buckle, they didn't, they didn't so much think about when they made it, but it's, it's good quality, but there is better out there. Yeah, because this, this part seems nice, but yeah. the, the buckle seems a bit yeah. shonky. Yeah. Harry's is £35, over £200 less than the real thing. He sells direct to customers using invite-only WhatsApp groups he sets up and controls. So we get to see, you know, what I've got in stock, you know, from different angles, see what they're like. People contact him via Instagram. He sends an invite back and they're in. 
Oh, what are the kind of comments you're getting here? What so, so saying, you know, one person said they're going to grab one tomorrow. Um, you know, one's querying about PayPal, you know, bank transfers. Oh, one's asking me what sizes I've got. And one's saying he'll choose, you know, he'll come and meet me and choose through the lot. It's like the drug game. If someone wants drugs, it's usually at random times. And if you don't have it at that time, they go to someone else. And that's when you lose a customer. Where are these photos taken? These are taken in one of the storage yards, in one of the boxes. Can I come to one of your storage yards? Yeah, yeah, I can take you to one of them. Yeah, we're outside one of them now. But can we look inside? No, I can't take you inside, unfortunately, because yeah. I don't want to, you know, I've shown you enough. Harry agrees for me to take the Gucci belt for further examination. Oh, no, it's fallen off. It's, <laughs> it's fallen off. A bit's dropped off already. Product test number one, it's failed massively. Fake you is not just being shipped in. It's made here too. Suppliers get round customs by legally importing unbranded clothes and the labels separately. They then sew on the labels in back alley sweatshops ready to be sold. My sources have told me about sweatshops in Cheatham Hill, Manchester, known as counterfeit capital of the UK. It's well known to authorities who raided last year seizing £2.5 million worth of fake gear and 5,000 prescription pills. Some traders made a run for it, recorded by a passerby. Factories operate at night, so I drive there one evening. The lights caught the shoes. It's like a shoe cemetery over here. There's loads of single, brand new, counterfeit shoes. So you've got a pair of Air Max, kid size. Oh no, you've got Stella McCartney's. Still with the sticker over the uh, metal bit there. A pair of Vans. They haven't even got the laces in yet. 90 pair of 97s, a pair of Nike Air Max 90s, Hirachis, got a nice pair of counterfeit Timberland. So it looks to me like someone's ditched a box in a bit of a rush. <laughs> I go back wearing undercover cameras posing as a customer. Good stuff. Yeah. Behind every shutter is hidden shop after hidden shop flogging fake goods. Well, it's like designer heaven. Thank you. I chat to the traders, but they won't talk about the factories. Just before we leave, I get a call. Hello, Hello mate, it's Livy. How are you? Yeah, my yeah, I'm not bad, thank you. You you up for meeting up? No, I don't have to the ring All right then, bye. Ben has worked in Cheatham Hills Black Market for three years. Other traders won't be happy he's talking, so he's taking a big risk. Hello. Have you ever been raided? There's a lot of time I've been raided. You and the, the fourth friend of yours got raided and everyone got raided. What happens when you get raided? Well, they take the stock in and they make a shop in trying to break the counters and everything. Then the big, big suppliers, they bring the stuff and people put it back in and just back on business. How long does that take from being raided to being back in business? To one week. A week? Do you ever work in factory, like putting things together anymore? Well, I do. Like putting the labels on and stuff like that. Do you ever do that? No, mm, I don't do it, but people do it. They do it. They're big factories and... Yeah. Yeah, it's like warehouses. If you go in, like you're working in, some people, they go in and they put the shutter down so you think it's closed, but the inside is everything going on. And so you, you shut in there from the time that that shutter goes down until it goes up again? Yeah. And how long could that be? Could be eight hours, three hours, one hour, ten hours, anything. We talked about fashion, um, high fashion items. 
but what about things like uh, pharmaceuticals? Mm. Have you ever sold sold and stuff? No, I don't sell them, but people know that they sell them. And you don't like that? You don't approve? No, because it's a fake type of business. And can, can it be pretty dangerous as well, in terms of if, say, if I think I'm taking one kind of drug yeah, and it's it not that exact drug? Obviously, it could be dangerous because these are people who don't know if it's original or fake or anything. If you take them and eat them or anything, they'll die or anything, we don't know. He told me about this world that we can't see, this world of counterfeit that exists below society's surface. And he said tomorrow, and he said off camera, that, because I said, look, I, I need to see it to believe it. And he said, tomorrow he might be able to get me in. So we'll, we'll see. But when I arrive, the area is in lockdown. We will draw too much attention filming openly, so use our mobiles instead. We can't find Ben and don't hear from him again. Britain's hot new drug of choice is Xanax, a nerve medicine used to treat anxiety and panic disorders. It is only available legally on private prescription, but access is limited but you can get it illegally on the black market. The catch is it's probably fake. It could be made of anything and dangerous to take. Just like with clothes, it takes me only minutes to find websites openly selling fake Xanax. Okay, so then this is, um, I think, proof that what's happening here isn't a legit website selling a legal product. If you look at their terms and conditions, it says, do not mention drug names, lab names, or the website in the bank transfers. How many times do I need to say it? You will lose your money if you do. So there's obviously, that's when the two worlds uh, collide. A contact puts me in touch with Sarah who sells counterfeit Xanax pills. Hello. Five, five minutes. Not five. Customer? Yeah. Can I see some of your product? Mm Can I ask what that was on the top there? It's a bit of heroin. A bit of heroin. That's quite, that's a large lump of heroin. It's a wee bit, a bit of weed. Uh-huh. <sighs> so these are Xanax? Mm hmm I thought they came like little bars. You get bars, you get oval ones, you get green ones, you get a big variety. Will they be gone tonight? They'll be gone. When we're finished. Oh, seriously? Yeah. So you're going to go do a deal like that straight away? Yeah. So what kind of age range are buying the Xanax? Young. Like, what sort of ages? Say about 14. 14? Sometimes it's hard to judge a kid's age, you know, so it could be younger. But I always think, yeah, younger, <laughs> looking at a teenager, they tend to be younger than how they look. 14-year-olds? Mm. Very young. And you don't feel anything about selling to a 14-year-old? No, because I'm going to go with some deals on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like about 10 or something, and I'm not going to sell them. Yeah. Yeah. That was surprising. I mean, I know that dealers sell to kids often, and kids buy drugs, but I've never had one actually say to me, yeah, I'm fine selling drugs to 14-year-olds, and I'd draw the line at, like, 10 which I am really shocked by that, actually. I've never had someone just admit it to me like that. The dealers don't know what's in their product, but when they take it themselves, they start thinking about the risk. I've heard of one dealer who has a unique approach to solving this problem. He agrees to talk if he can be anonymous. So, I mean, how often do you take them? Every day. 
Every day? Every day, every day, like in the evening time normally. And it comes out seven, eight o'clock, probably take two juices and then bust a drink and some weed. And I'm in sleep, I'm probably sleeping before like 11 o'clock. If I don't take them, I won't sleep until like three, four o'clock in the morning. Are you, you trust your sources? Yeah, but yeah. obviously, other links, if I was to get off another Donny, I'd have to give it to somebody else first, so then to test it before I take it, before someone said, but yeah, if people out there that are willing to do it for free. Yeah. Because they don't have to pay for it. So, I would, so they'll test drugs yeah. for yeah, free. free. Yeah, so literally that, well, street just, guinea pigs. Yeah, just give it to them, they don't want to do you want to do a test on it. So you give it a test on it, they'll run it back for more. That's bad, though, no? Like, 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 really, you can think about it. Yeah. Where do you think that's actually come from? Yeah, probably an underground lab of funky or someone from Europe somewhere is making them. I'm not too sure where. Do you if think... I knew that, I'll be cutting out my top man anyway. We know, really. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, I don't know exactly where they put it off. I'm from some underground lab, European. I don't know exactly where my man gets them from. They're just shipped in. That's it, Mitch. That's all I really can tell you. They just... He puts the order in. They come from wherever they come from, they're made. They look official, they're all in boxes. So it's not even like you're buying something, it's just, just clean pot tablets that come in a box with a name brand on it, what it is. So just like I said, it just looks like paracetamol tablets, you know? But they are definitely coming from somewhere. But that's, that's obviously not legit. Sure. So who is actually making these products? I contact site owners openly selling them, but they seem to be buying products in bulk, repackaging, and then shipping them on. Until I speak to Phil, who says he makes Xanax and other products from scratch in his own lab after learning exactly how to do it on YouTube. I ask for proof and get this back. So what we have here is 42,000 Xanax. This lot here, a street value of about £105,000. And this took me three hours to make. I want to see it for myself and ask to meet. Phil agrees, but on his terms. So this guy is supposedly a... Um drug pharmaceutical manufacturer has given me a random location and a time and what we've come here now there's a lad stood just over there which I think it might be him but he ain't he ain't coming over so I'm gonna see if I can flash my lights at him and see what happens basically it's coming hello hello how you doing? Good, thank you. First of all, could both of you turn your phones off, please? And then... Phones off? Yep. He's worried that our phone's GPS will record his location. What do you actually do? What's your business? I'm a manufacturer of steroids and uh, other pharmaceutical drugs. OK, so pharmaceuticals? Yeah, pretty much, yeah, on the black market. And when you say you manufacture them, are you putting them together? What, like, you actually... That's, I import the raw ingredients and chemicals needed, and then I... Um, press the tablets with uh, tablet press machines and the cook steroid oils and uh, yeah, turn it, turn tap powders into a finished product. Phil directs me to his lab. Is it far from here? Uh, no, not far. And how long have you had this place? Uh, I move locations fairly regularly. I've been here uh, about two months and I'm, about, I'm due to move again shortly. OK, and it, is that to avoid detection or...? Yeah, just to, just to stay light and uh, if you move from location to location, you're less likely to, to eventually get rumbled or busted, I suppose, so... We arrive 20 minutes later, in the middle of nowhere. His setup is beyond what I expected. The room is bare except for a few tables covered with equipment bought from China and a cement mixer. Phil's put on a suit and mask to conceal any identifying features. And how many 
underground labs do you think exist in the UK? Oh, it's impossible to say. Really? L little ones, there's, there's tons, tons of little ones that no one's really ever heard of. They've got their own little group of customers and it doesn't, word doesn't really spread much about them. But, you know, the, the top ones, the big guys that sort of have a hold on, on the market, there's sort of five, five, yeah, about five of us that uh, sort of have the market on lockdown. What makes a good lab? Uh, good products, good reliable products, um, you know, but most of the top labs in the top five, uh, we've been going for quite a few years and, you know, we're all conscious of our products and want to be, want to put out a good product for everyone and it shows in the reviews online and, uh, you know, we've all got our own brands and, you know, the reviews speak for, speak for themselves, really. We start with steroids. You know, I've had plenty of packages stops from customers to, to addresses, and a lot of the time you just receive a letter saying it's been seized. They don't really follow it up. Really? Some, yeah, sometimes they do, but majority of the time they don't. That's pretty bad, though, isn't it? You'd think... Well, there's, there's so much coming into the country with, across all black market trades and all drug trades. You know, they can't chase up everything and everyone, can they? So I'll stick that on there. Now we wait for that to cook. Dissolve. And while we're waiting for that to cook, how did you learn to do all of this? Uh, a bit of trial and error, um, lots and lots of reading and research, um, and I was lucky enough to to know another lab owner who uh, sort of passed down a lot of information to me, and uh, always trying to learn new techniques, new recipes and stuff, and always improving, always buying better equipment. Phil's operation is illegal but it's not against the law for people to have steroids for personal use. There's huge demand and it's ever, it's ever going. I've been doing this for, for many years and I've never been at a point where I can produce and supply enough to meet the demand for my product. That's incredible, that's, that's shocking. I'm, I'm always, always having to turn away resellers that want to stock, stock my lab. I'm always turning away customers. It's always been the case. I've never been able to, to produce enough for the demand. Do, do you ever feel any concern or guilt about what you do? No, absolutely not. Um, they, everyone's got their own responsibilities to look after their own health and they know that they're buying products that are made in an environment such as this and they're taking that risk, they're paying the money. I'm not forcing anyone to take steroids. If they want to take steroids, then supply and demand. I'll make it and I'll do it as best as I can and I'll give a good service and provide a good products and you know, the rest, rest is on them. He shows me the raw powder to make Xanax, also sent from China. Unlike the ingredients for steroids, it is illegal in China to produce. Phil tests the powder to make sure another drug, fentanyl, an opioid used as a pain medication, is not in it. I mean, that could kill people yeah, if absolutely, yeah. in their Xanax. Yep. Add a bit of water. Phil checks for fentanyl by adding water to powder, then uses a widely available urine test kit this batch comes back as negative and ready to use. And I mean, Xanax is a big one that... It's is very recently, to yeah. Use. Unfortunately, it is, yeah. But so is alcohol, so is weed, so is ecstasy, so is cocaine, the same as every other drug. But this is one thing that wouldn't necessarily... This quarter of a million pounds worth might not be there if you didn't manufacture that. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's not a drug I like making. I don't particularly... I wouldn't personally take it myself. Um, I don't think it's a great drug, uh, and even the NHS because they don't they don't prescribe it. Do you care about your customers who take Xanax? Because you don't have any interaction with them, do you? Because it's all well. I care about everyone as as a general rule. You know, I don't want harm to come to anybody. Um, but you know, I don't I don't know who the people that are buying this. This, this is all sold online to, so, you know, they're not fitness people. The people that, that buy and take these, you know, they're into the drug see recreational drug scene, you know, they can do what they want to do. Um, Sounds like you're kind of washing your hands of... I, was, I suppose, it, well, not, not in a sense. I mean, I still want to give them a good product. I still wouldn't do anything to, to harm them. I don't want any harm to come to anybody. Of course not. He also makes counterfeit clenbuterol. OK, so here we have our clemix, and we'll just pour that into the hopper there. Would you call it the hopper? Whoa! It's like... Can I uh, retake that? <laughs> no. <laughs> What kind of rate are we talking here? This so makes between four and five thousand per hour. Four and five thousand per hour. Yeah. So that is that that's mass producing, isn't it? I'd like them to go a lot faster. Really? <laughs> yeah. How many orders are you getting? Oh, I'd, I'd sell a lot, a lot, a lot of drugs. Uh, Shall I turn? 
Yeah, whoa. Sure. Clenbuterol is a Class C drug legally available on private prescription for people with breathing difficulties. But it can also burn fat quickly, so it's used illegally by people who want to lose weight. You have to be very, very vigilant on your mixing, um, because if you don't mix it properly, um, you get blind spots in your mix. So some tablets will have no powder in, uh, no clean raw in, and other tablets will be severely overdosed. And clean is quite dangerous. That is take, scary, that. Yeah, clean uh, So dangerous. If you take too much clean, you can you know, have heart palpitations, you can have, run into all sorts of difficulties. So when making stuff diced, diced in micrograms, you have to be very, very careful with your mixing. That is the first lab I've been in where it was kitted out with what I would think is sort of production on mass capabilities. Import the raw products from China um, and, you know, mix them, press them or cook them and then you have a product that can be sold online. So he's given me a sample of this is steroids basically, it's anabolic steroid. And he said, and he seemed quite keen actually for me to get it tested in terms of quality and what's actually in there. So uh, I'm keen to get the results, but he seemed pretty confident that they'll be quite impressed by that. I've also got fake Xanax and Clenbuterol samples from various places and taken them all to a licensed laboratory to get tested. The liquid steroid sample was found to be the most contaminated of them all, and the pills had variable amounts of the active ingredient in them. Consumers are clearly taking a risk using these products. So does it keep leading pill producers like Phil awake at night? Phil agrees to another meeting. When it comes to the steroid business, I started doing that to give the market a decent product because at the time the, the, the products on the market were extremely poor. And so that, that's why I, started, I went to the steroid game. Um, obviously financial reasons as, as well. Um, but yeah, Xanax is, is purely because the market's there and I'll make good money from it. There are dangers with Of course, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. No matter how good you go about your practice mm -hmm. of it, mm -hmm. uh, which you pride yourself on. But what if something happened to one of your the users of the product you've made, that would be extremely sad. Yeah. yeah. Of course, I don't want any harm to come to anyone. But you know, like I said before, it's personal responsibility. They've got they're making the choice to do what they want. So you know, it's, it's their decision. I'm, I'm not in, I'm not in control of them. What's the most important thing to you? Let me ask you that. Living a good life and giving the people around me that I care about a good life. Um, you know, that's that's what I do with my money mostly. Helping people, I help homeless, I do a lot of charities. Um, I'd like to do a lot more for the community um, eventually. It's really hard to like get my head around that because you say on the one hand, I mean, I know how much you care about your product from speaking to you and the pride you take in it. The fact that you do work for charity, you want to do more in the community. Wouldn't doing more work in the community perhaps start with stopping producing? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah probably. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. Because that's a big problem in the community. Yeah, drugs are a problem, but they're always going to be there regardless of if I'm here or not. People are always going to use drugs. People have always used drugs since the beginning of time, and they always will, so... Yeah. See you later.